Is there one piece of advice right off the top of your head that you could give to these young people for motivation to get started today? You're not cut out for it. Go back to the nine to five. It's not for you. It's time. Get ready for Harnick to sound off. This is the Harnick Debates Podcast with unfiltered thoughts and zero censorship. I can say what I want, when I want, and how I want it. Whether you like it or not. How do I know what you're saying is true without showing me the evidence? This podcast is not for the faint heart. Listen, pal, whether you like it or not, they'll never tell you what I'm about to tell you. You are now listening to the Harnick Debates Podcast series with host... Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the next episode on the Harnick Debates podcast series. I am your host, Harnick Burmy, aka Nick, and sitting across from me here at this table is one of my good buddies, Mech. He's an entrepreneur, he is a uh, businessman, he uh, makes his own income on his own time, and he's here to provide you guys with some advice on uh, motivation uh, in the business world. So first and foremost, Mech, I want to uh, say um, it's a pleasure meeting you, it's a pleasure being here. Man, it's always a pleasure linking up because every time we link up, magic happens. <laughs> magic happens, uh, that's the best way to put it. Um, so I want to start off uh, by saying, Give us a little bit of background on Mech. Who is Mech? Give me a little bit of a sort of backstory on how it was like growing up, uh, what the what your family life was, all that kind of stuff, just so the viewers can get a better sense of who you are. Awesome. Yeah, my name is Melchizedek Gabriel. I'm from East Africa, Tanzania. And I came here when I was 11 years old to Canada. And now we're in Symposium Cafe, which is actually just down the street from my house. Um, upbringing to be honest it was in many ways a lot of similar elements to just like anybody else everybody has hardship everybody has um, challenges um, yeah it just looks a little different you know I'm from Africa you might be from somewhere else some of you might be from Medellin you might be from Sri Lanka you might be from Toronto who knows but um, a lot of our child have similar elements you know challenges hardship everything but then obviously there's also those positive experiences um, but yeah, right now I'm just kind of looking forward to um, a great year, mainly because 2020 is already over and we could actually get shit going. Some things are actually opening up now. Like this place was un- inaccessible to sit down like last week, but now we could actually sit down again. It took almost a year for that to happen. It's crazy. So tell me a little bit about just um, your your life as a younger person because i know you're only tw- what 21 right so you're not yeah. you're not old but growing up what was it like because i know you you came from you said africa right so you came yeah. here so what was the transition like for you coming here to a brand new country all of a sudden you have all these changes you know school change friend change was there even a language barrier you know that was was any of that kind of uh of course yeah <laughs> so uh, how, how is that how is that like how is that you know feeling was it was it intimidating Man, um, it was different. It was different. I remember some of my earliest memories of coming to Canada was um, my elementary school teacher. Um, some people might know her by Miss McFadden from sixth grade in Ajax. And um, she was there when I first saw snow for the first time. And that was an awesome like milestone. And now I see snow like every day. But um, yeah, man, it was... Um, it was it was a change. It was it was it was a new feeling, new people, new community. Um, you know, I just had to just keep an open mind. Like language barrier, you said, I was I was okay. Like I did fine. I kind of had a basic understanding of English. I didn't have any practice speaking it, but I had a basic understanding. And I watched a lot of movies, so it was an easy transition to go from Swahili to English. Yeah, did you do you speak any lang- any other languages, Nick? Me, I speak uh, mostly it's English, but my parents are uh, they're Indian, right? So they're yeah. from uh, North India. So we speak Punjabi a lot. 
Oh, right? Hanji. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, it, it's funny when uh, when you actually told me uh, that you listen to a lot of different, like, music as well, yeah. different varieties, like Punjabi music. I was shocked. I was like, this is the first black dude I've ever met that actually listens to Punjabi music. Man, I try, I try to be, I try to be open-minded. The, the, diversify your, <laughs> your, your music, you diversify know? Diversify my music, diversify my portfolio, <laughs> like, everything, man. Well, that's, that's great, man. Um, so let's move on and discuss what you're doing right now. Okay. Right. So you, you are under sort of the class of entrepreneur, right? You work on your own time and you make your own sort of income. So tell me, what are some of your current business ventures that you are a part of right now? Thank you for asking that question. Um, currently, I'm focusing on building my um, digital marketing company. Obviously, you know, marketing is important for any kind of business. And I have a strong background in direct marketing. I did door-to-door -door sales from 14 years old up until 21. <laughs> so I have a lot of background when it comes to, you know, meeting people and entering uncomfortable conversations and converting them into a sale of a product or a service. Um, but yeah, digital marketing is my thing. Um, our industry kind of just grows and there's really no cap to it. Social media is huge now. So, you know, just kind of growing that business. I had a lot of experience with um, charity work and philanthropy stuff before, um, but now I kind of want to just double down on my skills and double down on what I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, actually what's interesting was um, last year, like around summertime, um, I was thinking of getting into photography as a hobby. And um, I remember I met you once again after not really seeing you since high school, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when we kind of started our own thing and started doing our photography stuff. So. You know, a lot of a lot of my work is just connected to digital marketing once again. Yeah. So that's that's very cool to, to know. You know, somebody as young as you, you know, only in your early twenties. Man, there's kids who are fourteen who are millionaires. So. Yeah. And you know that that's the thing. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of sacrifices yeah. that have to be made yeah. in order to get that extra step up if you will you know because we know people who are successful that are successful entrepreneurs or successful business folk yeah hours and hours and hours are just spent on the business aspect alone mm -hmm. and i want to ask you you know being that you started at a young age yeah you're not in school right now right you're you're doing your own thing yeah how did this this conversation go about with your parents like what what, what did they say when they realized okay you know, our son wants to do this, mm -hmm. and and I'm assuming it was kind of a little bit of a of a weird conversation because yeah. I know I know personally to, to after high school, you know, the plan was okay. Where am I going now? And school had to be that like first primary option. But you went a little differently. Talk to me about that. Yeah, and uh, thank you for asking, man. And love you, mom and dad. But I'm still gonna do what I want to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> My parents are understanding. Um, I do my best to have a close relationship with them. So a lot of my decisions they understand are coming from a place of rationality. Um, I'm not just waking up and just saying, hey, fuck school. Um, I already knew I wasn't going to go to school, like even before high school. <laughs> mm. I kind of already knew that I'm not really built for that, like that road. That's not my path. Um, I chose to travel the narrow road. I chose to get into a space where I'm unfamiliar. I chose to be, you know, comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I think that's gonna be a very, very important thing in my life until the day I die, to be honest. Mainly because every time I chose to step outside the comfort zone, every time I chose to do the opposite of, of what everybody else was doing, I tend to either learn something new or have amazing experiences. Um, business was one of those things. Sales was one of those things. Um, you know, photography is one of those things. Um, you know, just really stepping outside of my comfort zone is really where I'm most comfortable now. And I, I appreciate and respect, you know, the education opportunities we have right here available, but they're not really necessarily my path. Like, at least the traditional route, I have my own idea, I have my own vision of how I see the world, and that's what I want to see happen. Being comfortable stepping outside your comfort zone. Being comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's a great quote to live by, man. Uh, that's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Now we know in business yeah. in general, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of math involved, right? Because yeah. we're dealing with numbers. Yeah. Were you ever a math guy in high school? Uh, I'm gonna no. take that as a no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how'd you? I, I enjoyed math. Don't get it wrong. I enjoyed math. It's probably one of my more favorite subjects, mainly because it involves numbers. And what I noticed was, I didn't care to be um, the highest performer in my classes or anything like that, at least academically. But I always cared about learning and mastering something. You know, when it came to you know different parts of math, like fractions, for example. Um, I use fractions for my painting business. I'm always measuring, you know, I'm always, you know, I'm getting dimensions, you know, geometry, all the, all these things. Um, so I learned, I learned more from math outside of school than I did in school, <laughs> mainly because I was applying it. I think the application is something that we need more of, at least in our traditional educational system. Um, man, like you learn a lot of stuff in class and you just forget about it. You know, I, at least that was, that's what it was for me. I would learn something, I study for a test, then I just forget about it. I don't really need it. Um, but then making things practical, doing them in real life, um, helped me engrave a lot of lessons that I learned in math class that I completely forgot about. But then revisiting them when I needed them became a big thing. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So as you can see, uh, we kind of had to change our setting. You know, we got kind of bored inside. So we were like, let's go outside for a bit and give you guys a little bit of a taste of what it's like here in March. Sunny, windy, and still cold. <laughs> <laughs> but let's get back to our conversation. Uh, so you were asking me. Mm -hmm. uh, were, you, were, you, were you ever a math guy, by the way? Yeah, so with respect to that question, I, I'm kind of, I was kind of in the same boat as you because I was always... Um, I wasn't a numbers guy to begin with. I I found math very intimidating. Intimidating. Right? I, I mean, it, it can be. Yeah. And quadratics. For sure. <laughs> and me personally, I, I was a writing guy. I was already yeah. somebody that who would uh, who would articulate my thoughts better than writing formulas. Right? Mm -hmm. And to get better at writing, it was always about just like in math, you need to practice. And with writing, it was always reading, continuously reading books, continuously reading literature, always giving time to write in the day, right? So giving maybe yourself 30 minutes, an hour, write about something off the top of your oh, head. So you dedicated 30 minutes, wrote about something. Mm -hmm. Now, do you just pick anything? Do you just kind of like... Yeah, we just... Whatever's on your mind, right? It doesn't have to be... It doesn't have to be... 100% perfect. It doesn't have to be something that you are are going to uh, look to publish somewhere. You know, it doesn't have to be like that. Just rough thoughts, raw work, and it, it it's genuine, right? Now, yeah. with the respect to, to competition, right? It's you you, you want to continuously write so that you get better because there's always others out there that are doing even more. And right. some of them have been writing way longer than you've been writing. For sure. <laughs> and that kind of leads into my next question because, yeah. you know, in business, there's a lot of a lot of people out there that already have this idea that yeah. you may have thought of, right? And you yeah. might be like, this is this is unique. And then you realize, oh, somebody else is already doing this. Yeah. So there's always constant competition to get better. I was actually watching this um, this interview uh, with uh, Pat David on Value Entertainment. I think you know. Yeah. I think you know him. And I was talking to. I was listening to him talk with a psychiatrist, and yeah. his name was Doctor Amen, right? Okay. And he in introduced the idea of competition as being, it, it's 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 a bad thing, for for one's health, okay. right? And he said, the idea of co constantly competing, it it wanes more stress on the individual. And it releases dopamine a lot, right? So you're constantly going for this this high after, let's say, you sell something or you make a big profit. Yeah. It's never enough. You're always yeah. going for more. Yeah. And he ended up saying, technically, that's a bad thing. That's not something that anyone would advise somebody, right? But that's what business is all about. So I have to ask you, mm -hmm. has that constant uh, competitive nature in business, has that affected you in any negative way? Has it 
ever dawned on you that hey man i should maybe take a step back because i'm going i'm going too hard because i know i know you, you you don't make consistent income so this is the only way you may actually make money so what do you do like in in this kind of situation um good question man and i'm only 21 you know i haven't really been in business long enough to tell you what the right answer is when it comes to competition but in my experience what i find is only compete with yourself only compete with yourself because that's the only way you're going to be fulfilled um, it's about it's about looking at what you can do to improve f for from who you were yesterday right but not looking at somebody who is because uh, you're not them because not today right it's it's <laughs> yesterday it was how you were yesterday compared to today not how somebody is today right because yeah. that that you don't know what they were doing the past 10 years that yeah that could be it could be very stressful when you look at others and compare yourself you're not them um and honestly man it, it could be tough because competition is everywhere mm. it's everywhere it's everything you're competing like you're competing with with your genetics. You're competing with bacteria right now. Like if 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 our immune system wasn't as strong as it was, we would we would, we wouldn't even survive. So you're you're competing with you know um, organisms that you don't even really even know about. <laughs> so competition is, I think it's a part of human life, and it's good to embrace it. Um, but then having an awareness of where you put your attention to. Um, pay attention to what you're paying attention to and um, being aware of how you're interpreting things um, for example like maybe I mean I know women face this a lot um, maybe they got all dressed up to go somewhere and maybe it's their event maybe it's their birthday it's their this it's their that and then some girl comes in who's dressed a little bit better than them <laughs> and um, naturally they feel a little threatened because they're naturally going to start competing and comparing themselves to that person thinking oh why is she looking a little bit better on my own event or this or that um other ways competition can show up is um just through conversations for example like i i try my best to listen and and be in the moment um but sometimes it's hard sometimes you just want to fucking talk <laughs> so you know like it's it's one of those things it's like you know even 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 when it comes to something as simple as like conversations listening versus conversing um i don't know where i was going with that <laughs> but yeah you know i just main point is compete only against yourself and um just do your best to be aware of what you're paying attention to are you paying attention to somebody else um and are you using them as a way to put yourself down i think we don't even realize sometimes the fact that um when we're comparing ourselves we're building and uh, manufacturing insecurities right so you know just kind of stuff like that do you feel like um competition is like a big thing in um at least in the direction you're headed with your writing and what kind of literature do you want to be writing about well with me it's just uh like right now, I'm just doing in general, uh, uh, writing different things, yeah. uh, different literature, more mostly short stories. Okay. I like. Uh, I'm hoping to get more into that. Uh, yeah. Hopefully this summer. Okay. Um, I write a couple blogs here and there. I think yeah. you know about that. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I read every one of them. Really, just looking at how can I create a story with my own thoughts, right? Yeah. How can I create? How can I turn what's up here into a narrative on here? ah right so that's fun for me you know it's a competition i'm not really looking at other people and saying can i be better than them i'm looking at other people and i'm saying how can i how can i do this because because they're they're being they're at the top already right they're doing yep. well yeah so it's foolish for me to think yeah okay at this stage right now i'm going to be better than them yeah. I haven't even I haven't even scratched the surface, and these guys are publishing novels, right? How, what the hell am I thinking? I'm going to be better than them? <laughs> I got to look at it and say, well, listen, I got to learn from them first, mm -hmm. because I'm not there yet, right? Yeah. So that's 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 how I look at it, right? That's that's the way I motivate myself. It's never to look at others and try to be better. It's always like, what can I learn from this person? Mm -hmm. So as opposed to um, 
looking at them and comparing to what they have and what you don't have and thinking that you're inferior you look at them and see a lesson you see something new to learn you see an opportunity oh yeah i mean you see, you see a lot of people out there that make a lot of mistakes right and you see if you don't learn from them you're bound to make them as well that's true right so it's best to not not look at it as uh you know as a way where you're ignorant or you think that this is not going to happen to me or this is something that is just a one-off situation it's always about understanding where you can get to uh based on how somebody else has done it right so if they've done it the right way okay maybe i can replicate that they did it the wrong way maybe i want to change the way i'm doing it right but it's always about again it's always about looking uh with with respect to how others do things yeah because you never create something on your own right you never do that it's always group work yeah. it's always looking at and other people's work comes initially from inspiration from others right yeah for sure so moving on uh currently right now we're as you can see our situation we're sitting outside uh it's getting brisky out here you know it's it's cold <laughs> it's still march and we're sitting out here and there's nobody else out here we're still in the midst of this pandemic right it's waged over the whole world for like over a year now you know and a lot of us have had to adapt to different modes of learning yeah and different modes of of, of working yeah i want to bring in this uh the stat that i found according to a study conducted by um the Pew Research Center in October 2020, yeah. out of 5,858 U.S. adults, right, it's a U.S. study, many stated that the transition from in-person to at-home work has been relatively easy. 64% of adults say that they are feeling very or somewhat more motivated to do their work while at home compared to 36 who find it, 36% who find it very or somewhat difficult, which is kind of shocking. I want to ask you, how has the transition been during COVID-19 with respect to your work and what you do? Mm -hmm. And what kind of an effect has it had on your ability to, on your ability <laughs> to continue to sell your services to others? Sorry about that. The wind is terrible today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. Um, honestly, man, COVID affected everybody. Um, if you did not strike during COVID, if you didn't adapt, if you didn't learn something new, if you didn't step outside your comfort zone and try something, um, you're the one who lost. So, for example, when it comes to, you know, marketing, um, I just had to adapt. I couldn't do door-to-door -door marketing anymore. <laughs> I had to move online. And that helped me strengthen weaknesses in my business that I wasn't addressing. Right? So, for me, it was a learning experience. You know, it was a moment of growth. I'm actually at a much better position today than I was in the beginning of the pandemic. So let's kind of uh, move on and discuss some of your recent work that you've done. Yeah. So I know uh, you actually wrote a, a short section in this uh, in this book. So with uh, your good friend uh, Raisa. Uh, yeah. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that. What you what you write about? What was it about? Um, for the people that don't know, Abso, um, amazing people shaping our world, is um, it's it's an it's an amazing organization that a friend of mine actually runs. Um, they wrote a recent book called um, "Be in the Conversation," and um, it's mainly a bunch of authors who wanted to get into you know get into writing and who may not have had any previous work, right? And they're using this as a platform to bring up conversations that maybe have some stigma behind them. Conversations that um, maybe aren't really often talked about. I chose to write about how I went from being an introvert to an extrovert. Not saying that I'm a completely different person and I'm a completely extroverted now, but um, a lot's changed since since when I since when I was first kind of you know getting out there. Um, yeah, so I wrote about being an introvert and uh, how to go from an introvert to an extrovert, and kind of just writing about the process through that, you know methodology psychology and also practical steps um check out the book i don't want to give you all the sauce right now so you gonna have to go read it for yourself well that's interesting is it out right now um soon shortly okay it'll be out soon okay so that that's great man i mean you're you're um you got your 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 feet in a lot of things like you know your hands in a lot of things man and things. honestly sometimes and, and i look at myself and and some of my mentors tell me man you gotta just pick one thing and stick to it mm -hmm. 
but um no, but you have I'm, good experiences you know. right like to to talk about even just yep. to write about so you could uh, live in life right for sure I, I think people could learn from some of your things because I again, hope so <laughs> again you're not 45 years old right here you're, you're 20 you're 20 21 yeah you have experience and your experience is not again when when somebody who has 20 30 years of experience is talking to you yeah sometimes it gets overwhelming sometimes it gets you, you can't connect with that yeah, person agreed but if you're talking to specifically guys like us younger people yeah you can connect very easily with them you know you have you have that charm to communicate with people that are of our age right and that's important because there's guys like me and you know even you well more so me and and other people that aren't so uh involved in this uh lifestyle of of making your own income right of sacrificing the typical things right to try out something different right to to pursue something different and that i find is very inspir inspirational thank you man i hope I, I hope i can inspire and motivate a lot of people that's my For goal sure I don't mind the the drip from my nose. I'm just shivering uh, out here. It's cold out here, son. It's cold. I, we we came out here a couple minutes ago, and we were like, "Man, this feels amazing." Because it was it was kind of boiling inside. I was wearing a big ass jacket, and now we're outside here, and um, I want to go back inside. But the sun uh, is deceiving. But we're doing this for you, right? We're doing this for you. So you for you. So um, <laughs> make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and fucking hit the notification bell. Cause this is quality content right here <laughs> this is quality content you know exactly <laughs> okay so let's move on let's kind of wrap this up we've gotten a lot uh, we've talked a lot about um, motivation we've talked a lot about competition we've talked a yeah. lot about inspiration yeah i want to ask you yeah what was the first product or service that you sold to somebody whatever it was and how much did you make off of it i was going door to door Asking people if they have washing machines or dryers that they're not using. And I picked them up for free. I put them up on Kijiji and made a profit. Man, I've heard that story so many times from you. <laughs> and I always think, like, I'm like, well, how does somebody think, uh, I'm just going to start selling washing machines? How does that, how does somebody think of that? As you know, earlier we were talking about um, when the pressure is on. And um, that's the thing. When the pressure is on, you got to innovate. Like, you know, I, my family came here with nothing. So I, I didn't have the luxury of um, waiting for Tim Hortons to reply to my email. Um, I didn't have the option of, um, you know, just kicking back and hope. You know, I, not even hope. I think a lot of people just are comfortable. And um, I was never fully just completely comfortable. I was always striving for more. Um, I always had the fire under my ass to just do better. And. I think um, it's not something you could um, you could just do. I think it's a situation you gotta just create for yourself. What was the worst bargaining experience that you went through with the with the client? Man, I got endless. Um, Give me one off the top of your head. Worst bargaining experience. Well. <sighs> I was fundraising for um, Center for Addiction and Mental Health, and um, I was just collecting donations, going door to door, regular stuff. Met this amazing family. Um, sat down with them. You know, I, I met the wife. Um, great person. They ended up donating. Um, but man, uh, the husband didn't really want it to go down, right? So he wasn't really feeling it. He was trying to stop it. He was, you know. He wasn't being aggressive, he was a good person, he had great intentions, but um, you know, as I was negotiating with the client and taking them through the steps, they just kind of kept butting in and saying something or doing something, just trying to get, to get me off focus and um, you know, just learn to just eliminate distractions and um, handle objections properly. Was he brown? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, I just kind of had to say that, you know. I, I know I, you I, have some I, you have some interesting experiences uh, bar bargaining with some uh, no man, I, Sri Lankans, I, Indians. I I don't. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty straight up with bargaining. Yeah. So I guess I'm kind of bad at it because I just yeah. straight I go straight for the lower price, right? I mean, hey, this it, it, is 
It's a, it's a negotiation I tactic. I don't have that charm to kind of convince others like, hey. I think everybody does. You just, just haven't used it yet. Yeah, you got to tap into that potential, right? Uh, you, which you clearly tapped into, as we know. I um, uh, hope so. So I guess one final thing. Yeah. Your Instagram bio, you got a quote. Yeah. And it says, be the best, fuck the rest. Yeah, I got that from my mentor, Arash Dibazar. Um, he is a jiu-jitsu black belt. Um, he has five wives. <laughs> For real? <laughs> what are my idols, right? So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I know. All all jokes aside, um, you have to just focus focus on be the best. Fuck everything else. Straight up. Just be the best. Fuck the rest. Well, that wraps it up <laughs> for this episode, ladies and gentlemen. Um, hey, actually, I just got one last thing before I want to sure. I want to cut off. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of people out there. And there's a lot of friends I know, a lot of guys I know. Yeah. This idea of innovation and doing something outside of the box. Yeah. It's a foreign concept, right? It's just it's it's not something that they think of, right? Okay. And how do you go about convincing somebody and telling them that this is something they should consider? looking at okay this nine to five i'm going to try to i'm going to just stop and i'm going to try to see what else can i do with my life that's more more me right where i'm not working for somebody else where i'm making my own income where i got my own businesses is there one piece of advice right off the top of your head that you could give to these young people for motivation to get started today you're not cut out for it go back to the nine to five it's not for you the reason I say that is because um, it's easy to look at the fantasy and it's easy to look at the positives, um, but those times when you're working 12 hours a day, 18 hours a day, and you're still short on your bills, you know, and you're doing that months, years at a time maybe, um, that's just how it is. Like, you know, you're not really going to be getting success right away um, unless you're fucking amazing. Um, but yeah, like most people, you're not cut off for it. Um, it's not for you. Go back, go back to school, go back to work. Um, if you truly feel that this is for you, try it out. But for most of you, don't do it. You're not cut off for it. Wow, I didn't expect that. Yo, I didn't <laughs> expect that. Okay, well, yeah. Mech, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Always. It's been a pleasure knowing you. I'm glad we got to sit down and talk. And uh, I hope that uh, you continue to inspire more people and motivate them and tell them straight up what it is and what it is not, right? You know, I always look at it, what my motivation is, uh, I always look at it as, you know, our final destination is, is inevitable. It's the same. It's death. We all win. We all get to yeah. die. <laughs> it's all, no, but it's a, <laughs> you see that? He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't get that. Like, you know, he, I, I caught him off guard there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, what I was saying is it's inevitable. Yeah. We, we all die one day. We're yeah. all gone. That's what we all win. So it's always in my head that, okay, if that's my end goal, then I only have so much time to do this thing or that thing. Yeah. So I might as well get started right now. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for tuning in to this uh, very first episode, full episode of this podcast. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys... Um, uh, feel motivated, feel inspired. Um, if you want, uh, follow Mech on Instagram at uh, the beginning, middle, and end, and follow me on Instagram at underscore Harnick, Burmy underscore. I'll leave the tags at the bottom. Um, stay tuned for more episodes. But as for now, Mech, Nick, we're signing off. I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. <laughs>